Hi, welcome back. This lesson is on using rounding to estimate sums and differences. Rounding is a really useful skill. Even when you're working with a calculator, it's really easy to mistype. Uh, some calculators have sticky keys. I know I've got one in particular that um, always seems to not realize that I'm pressing the decimal point, and that of course throws everything off. Um, some people have a tendency to press the multiplication key when they mean to press the division key. At any rate, if you have a tendency to mis-enter things in a calculator, it's really useful to be able to tell if your answer is uh, something that's reasonable. But outside of calculators, rounding is a very useful skill. Rounding is another word for estimating. We all have budgets, and being able to keep ourselves under budget without having to use a calculator, right? Just figuring things out on the spot is a handy dandy thing. Um, we sometimes have to anticipate a result. Even with a calculator or some other type of machine display, it's important to be able to tell whether or not what the machine is showing is reasonable. Okay, so let's start off with some vocabulary. Uh, we have a quiz coming up this week, and vocabulary is going to be a key component on that quiz. So if you haven't started making note cards already, you should probably do that. Go back through the readings, find the words that are in bold, make yourself some note cards, and study up on vocabulary. So let's see, we'll get a little space here. An estimated answer. An estimated answer is an answer that is obtained by rounding a result or by using rounded values in a calculation. If you're going to give someone an estimated answer, it's important that they know that that's what they're getting. So we would use words like about or approximately or maybe the symbol approximately, the two little squigglies like an equals on top of each other. Um, but we want to let people know that what they're getting is not actually exact. An exact answer is when neither the original values neither the original values nor the result are rounded. So in an earlier lesson we learned how to round to a specific place value. Uh, we know how to round to the tens place and the thousands place and the millionths place and the decimals. Um, we're going to use those again and today we're also going to use something called front-end rounding. Front-end rounding is really, really useful, especially when you have values that are very different in size. So with front-end rounding, what we do is we round using the far left place value. And this means that the place to where you round might be different for each number inside the calculation. Okay, so let's try some examples. Here we are, example one. We have some resistors 
rated at 482, 1,159, 1,845, and 1,583 ohms. These resistors are connected in series, and we already know that when resistors are connected in series, the total resistance is the sum of the individual resistances. So all we have to do is add these together. Um, what we'd like to do is estimate the total resistance of the circuit. So our first estimate is going to be created by rounding to the nearest 10. So like before, we will underline the tens place and see what our rounded values are. So 482 rounded to the nearest 10 is 480 because that 2 is smaller than 5. 1,159 rounded to the nearest 10 is 1,160 because of course this 9 here is larger than 5. Pause the recording, try the next two, see what you get, and then come back. Okay, so let's see. 1,845, that would round to 1,850, because this 5 is exactly halfway, and so we round the 4 up. And 1,583 would round to 1,580. All right, there we go. Of course, we're adding because this is a sum, and that's what we do. So we add all these up. Let's see, a bunch of zeros added together is 0. 8 plus 6 is 14. 8 and 5 is 13. 13 and 14 is 27. Put down the 7, carry the 2. 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 1 is 7. Plus 8 is 15, plus 5 gives us 20. Carry the 2 again. 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have 5,070, and that's an estimated total because we use rounded values. So if we were going to report this to somebody, we would say that the total resistance of the circuit is approximately 5,070. And not just 5,070 with nothing else after it. This is resistance. This is 5,070 ohms. Okay, let's try this again. Take the same situation and this time we will round our values to the nearest 100. All right, so the nearest 100 here, we're looking for the hundreds place. Underline the digit in the hundreds place so that we can focus on it. 482 rounded to the nearest 100 should be 500 because the 8 right next to it is larger than 5. Take a second, pause the recording, write down the next three rounded values, and then compare yours with what we get here on the recording. Okay, let's see. Uh, 1,159, that would round to 1,200. 1,845, that would round to 1,800. And 1,583 would round to 1,600. Of course, we're still adding. And now you see the adding has gotten a little easier because we've made a greater estimate. And that's the thing about estimating. The job is to make it something that we can do quickly and easily and that gets us to the ballpark so we can see what's reasonable, what's going to be expected. 5 plus 2 is 7, plus 8 is 15, and then plus 6 more is 21. Put down the 1, carry the 2, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the total resistance of the circuit is about 5,100 ohms. So see right now, we don't even know what the total resistance is. We are just approximating so that when we calculate the total resistance, we know if we are in the correct ballpark or not. Okay, let's do this problem once more. This time we want to use front end rounding. Whoops, hold on a second, let me unscroll that. There we go, front end rounding to estimate the total resistance. And front end rounding is done by using the far left place value. So in 482, we would use the number here in the hundreds place. But in 1,159, we would use the thousands place. And the same is true for the next three values. So 482 would round to 500. 1,159 rounded to the nearest thousand is about 1,000. 1,845 rounded to the nearest thousand is about 2,000. Now you see how easy this addition is going to be here? 1,583, well that's going to round to, oh let's see, looking to the right we see a 5, 5 bumps the 1 up 2, that also rounds to 2,000. 
and then we're adding. This is a problem we could do very quickly and easily in our heads without really even having to write down these values. We can just sort of see them over here. So we've got 500 plus 1,000 plus 2,000 plus another 2,000 looks like 5,500. So the total resistance of the circuit is approximately, and you remember these two little squigglies mean approximately, 5,500 ohms. Now all of our approximations were roughly in the same area. Uh, it's really a question of the situation that determines which type of rounding we might want to use. Uh, we should probably compare this with the actual. So let's come down here and calculate the total resistance of the circuit. All right, um, you know, don't grab your calculator. Try doing this by hand. And then come back and check with me and see how you did. All right, let's give it a shot. 2 plus 9 is 11, plus 5 is 16, plus 3 more. Is that right? No. Hold on. Yes, of course that's right. 2 plus 9 is 11, plus 5 is 16, plus 3 more is 19. Put down the 9, carry the 1. What was I thinking? I don't know. 1 plus 8 is 9, plus 5 is 14, plus 4 more is 18, plus 8 more is 26. Put down the 6, carry the 2. 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 1 is 7, plus 8 is 15, plus 5 is 20. Put down the 0, carry the next 2. 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4, plus 1 more is 5. So here we are, 5,069. The total resistance of the circuit is, because we actually did this, or maybe you might want to write equals, but whatever we're doing, we are claiming for a fact that this is the answer. Nothing being rounded, that would be this is our exact answer because we didn't use any rounded values in the calculation and we didn't round the answer when we got done. So we can say is, we could say equals, um, we could be emphatic about it and say is exactly, but at any rate we have 5,069 ohms. Okay, uh, let's try one with decimals. flipping to the next page. So here we have one pound of liquid R134A, which of course is a type of refrigerant, and this has a volume of 0 0.0135 cubic feet. Real quickly, let's practice reading this decimal properly. This would be the tenths place, the hundredths place, the thousandths place, and the ten thousandths place. So we could say 135 ten thousandths of a cubic foot or just 135 ten thousandths cubic feet. When this refrigerant changes to a gas, it now has a volume of 0 0.4267, 4,267 ten thousandths. Okay, so here we go. Our first job is to round each value to the nearest thousandth to estimate the change in volume. So the nearest thousandth, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, that's the third decimal place, Let's see, this would round to 0 0.42, and then this 6 here we change to a 7 because the 7 right next to it is larger than 5. We need a change in volume, so we're going to subtract. And let's see, this 3 is going to round up to a 4 because that 5 is, of course, 5 or greater. So 0 0.1, oh, sorry, 0, 1, Four. And then we subtract. Ah, you can do the subtraction without a calculator. This doesn't even require borrowing. 7 minus 4 is 3, 2 minus 1 is 1, 4 minus 0 is 4. Put down the decimal point and the 0 so that we don't lose the decimal point when we're talking to people. So in changing from a liquid to gas, the volume of one pound of this refrigerant did what? Well, let's see, the gas had the larger volume, so this increased. by, and this is a rounded value, so we might say by about 0 0.413, and the units here are cubic feet. Okay. All right, let's try again. Same scenario. This time we want to round each value to the nearest hundredth. 
Okay, let's find our hundredths place. That would be the second decimal place. So we'll underline that just like we did before. And let's see. Looking to the right of the 2, we see a 6 is going to cause the 2 to increase by 1. 0 0.43. We are still subtracting. We've got the hundredths place where the 1 is underlined. Looking to the right, we see a 3. That's not enough to change the 1 to a 2, so the, so the 1 is going to stay the same. 0 0.01. See, now the subtraction just got a whole lot easier. Um, 0 0.01. Or two. So just like before, when this refrigerant changes from a liquid to a gas, the volume increases by about 0 0.42 cubic feet. All right, so don't want to forget those units on there. If you said that the volume increases by about 0 0.42, that just even sounds weird. So rewriting your answer or thinking your answer as if it's in a sentence helps you remember the units and give somebody a complete answer. All right, one more time. This time we're going to use front end rounding to estimate the change in value. And this time we have a decimal. So the job here is to use the far left like we did before, but we don't want to use any placeholder values. So we want the far left non-zero place value. So when we look at the 0 0.4267, we would choose the tenths place. And if we were looking at 0 0.0135, we would choose the hundredths place. OK, so let's see. Um, the first value, the number that stuff is being subtracted from. Do you remember what that's called? Yeah, because vocabulary is coming up on that quiz. The number that stuff is being subtracted from, that would be called the minuend. Okay, so our minuend rounds to the nearest tenth. Looking to the right, we see a 2, so the 4 is just going to stay the same. Um, our subtrahend, the amount being subtracted, is... Um, rounded to the nearest hundredth, and this one is also going to stay the same because the digit to the right is less than 5. So minus 0 0.01. Remember to line up your decimal points. And to see the subtraction more clearly, we might want to add a 0 there just so we can keep track of things. Of course, we can't subtract 1 from 0, so we borrow from the 4 and change the 0 to a 10. 10 minus 1 is 9, 3 minus 0 is 3, keep the decimal point where it was. So if we were using front end rounding, we could say that the volume increased by approximately, here we'll use the symbol, 0 0.39, and again we have the units of cubic feet. Okay, let's come down just a little bit more. Determining the actual change in volume, right? that just means we're going to subtract like we normally would. Um, you can do this without a calculator. doesn't even require borrowing here. 7 minus 5 is 2. Ah, I'm having difficulty. You pause this, try it on your own, and then come back. Okay, let's give this just another shot. 7 minus 5 is 2. 6 minus 3 is 3. 2 minus 1 is 1. 4 minus 0 is 4, decimal point where it belongs. Bring down the 0 so we can see our decimal point. So in changing from a liquid to a gas, the volume of 1 pound of R134A increased by exactly 0 0.4132 cubic feet. OK, so one of the big deals to remember from today is that if we are going to give people rounded answers, we should let them know. So we can say things like about or approximately. Okay. 
we can use our little approximately symbol, but either way we should tell people what it is that they are getting. Okay, good luck with your homework and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.